What's it like to be a tech person uh, for so long? I've been working in tech over 20 years in different roles, different capacities, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of a spiel about my journey, uh, where I started, and sort of how I got to where I am right now. Maybe along the way, you're somebody who's working in tech right now. Maybe you're starting out, maybe you're a veteran, you've been around in technology for a long time. Maybe some of the things will inspire you to maybe go and try some new things. I don't know, we'll see how we go. I'm Emilio, if you don't already know, I have a tech YouTube channel, which is this one right here. I'd well, love it if you do the subscription thing, click on the bell as well. It shows me that you are supporting this channel and uh, you don't miss out on any of my content by clicking on that bell as well. Hey, but before we do get into that, I need to tell you about this amazing product that I've stumbled upon. Uh, it's my company called SysAid. And if you're an IT pro like I am, you know what IT admins do most of the time? They're just helping staff. They're having tickets that are logged, sorting the responding, the actioning and resolving of tickets. And this is where SysAid Copilot comes in, makes IT service management easy. What if I could use AI to make this whole thing just work better. An IT admin can now do things quicker. It helps them to resolve issues faster. And there's an awesome AI chatbot which essentially taps into a massive knowledge base. It's gonna help your staff, your employees, and a beautifully designed dashboard where you can see everything in the one spot. So now all of the consuming task of looking through tickets, sorting through tickets, you as an admin can now get onto the stuff that matter. I'm telling you what, SysAid Copilot is like the thing that you need to try out. I've got a link to it down below of this video. You get 20% off it. Awesome deal available for you right now. SysAid Copilot check it out. If you want to learn a lot more about tech, I've got full length training courses available. You can go check them out down below of this video description. I was in school. I loved technology. I loved playing around with computers and I just was like, I need to do this for a living. So when I finished school, I went to university and I got myself my bachelor's degree in technology and sort of went from there. Now, while I was studying in university, I needed a bit of cash, right? I was, I was, uh, cashless, didn't have a job, didn't know what I was doing, but I knew what I did like and that was computers, I liked computers. So then I actually went and started working in some computer stores, right? Something so simple, selling bits of computers, selling motherboards, CPUs, you know, software, and then started building computers for people in these computer stores, actually custom building stuff and then providing some support. I would go to people's homes, and set up the computers for them. And this is all at the same time while I'm helping my family and my friends with IT things. It taught me about all of the different brands of all of the bits. It taught me how the bits talk to each other. It talked to me about how to get best performance out of them. And then when I started doing troubleshooting of people's computers, that was amazing because that then led me to the next spot, the next position. Anyway, working there, working in these computer stores, I think I worked all up in three different computer stores over time, doing Windows stuff, and then eventually moved into the Apple space and worked at Apple centers, uh, and actually were doing the Apple stuff, but on the Mac side instead of the PC side, which I sort of betrayed Windows for a little bit. But I got exposed to Apple, and that was actually a really, really good thing, because at that point, Apple was uh, not as amazing as it is right now, right? The the iPhone didn't exist, the iPad didn't exist, nobody really knew about anything. All I knew was about the Mac or the Macintosh. And that was fine. And I started getting my, my hands dirty in that. I'm doing the thing. Final year of university, we had to develop a project, uh, like an, app, an actual application project for a real life client. We could actually go to a real life client. Well, actually the clients came to us and we had to build something for them. And as part of that, me and a team of people, we actually went and developed something, right? We actually built them something. I used a software package or a code Coding language called Eiffel. Don't know if you've ever heard of Eiffel, but essentially it was a combination of this thing called Eiffel and uh, C Sharp. And we built something that was pretty cool and they really liked it. And look, I mean, they probably never ended up using it, but I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go and give my resume, my CV to my client and hopefully they can get me a proper job outside of university. But anyway, I was the one who gave him the CV. And as a result of that, he gave me a job. That was exciting. And uh, that first job was a, a contract position for six months, but it taught me a lot. It was for a significantly large telecommunications company. I'm based in Australia, if you can tell from my dodgy accent, but it was on behalf of Microsoft Consultancy Services. So I was working, essentially my job was using uh, this technology called
called SMS. So not, not like phone SMS. If you know anything about um, SCCM, which is a, an awesome tool by Microsoft to go and deploy and manage fleets of computers and do patching and all this sort of stuff. Well, before SCCM, this, this thing used to be called SMS. And we were just using that to go and deploy things and update things. And I, start, I got exposed to Active Directory and all these other bits and pieces. But that was instrumental. And I'm gonna say, I would have done that for free. If you're maybe starting out, you don't even know where to start out. Start out with just offering your services for free. If you know basic stuff about computers, go and bunch of companies say, hey, look, are you willing to take me on for a couple of months as free work experience? They may do that. And that's gonna give you a enormous amount of expertise, experience, because you're now working in a company. That's sort of the first bit. All right, and then from there, essentially what happened is after the six month contract ended, I thought I need to now get a job that is full time. And I started applying and applying and applying and I wasn't getting very much, you know, nobody was calling me. But then eventually I did get the call. And you know what, because I had the experience, the basic, basic experience, I was able to get my job in a level two position as a desktop support analyst position. And that's when I got really into the nitty gritty and I worked there for a company for almost eight years and I, grabbed as much knowledge and experience as I could right there. I learned about everything that I could. I learned a lot about Active Directory. I then started getting exposed to data centers, working in data centers, starting to play around with servers, starting to rack switching equipment, doing all this cool, cool stuff that I'd never ever touched before. Because before then, it was all about the desktops and the laptops. And now I'm playing around with this tech. I then became a sys administrator. And this is where things got really, really exciting because now I was able to do a lot more. Little short note, I didn't just become a sys admin because they gave it to me. I had to work hard for them to give me that responsibility. And I'll tell you what I did. I wasn't getting the opportunity at this workplace to do what I wanted to do because this is a big company. It was a global company, 40,000 employees. It was massive. And I was just a desktop person and didn't really get to play around with the server tech as much. But what I did at home, and this is the best thing, and this is what I'd recommend for any techie at all who's wanting to get into their career, more into tech, is build a home lab. I built a home lab at home where I just started playing around with stuff. Don't expect it to just come to you on your lap. Sometimes it may, you know, maybe you got that opportunity. Fantastic, it didn't come to me. I had to go and work on this on my own time learn on my own time, invest a bit of time, a little bit of cash to build myself a home lab so that I could learn about these things. I was then able to say to people in my company, talk to the right people, let me build some servers. I know about VMware, here it is, look at what I've done. And then I was in, I was in, that's it. And then I got, got to become a sysadmin and started now playing around with all of that. And I wanted something new. And this is where I went in and started working in what's called the MSP space, the managed service provider space. But this is now, I'm no longer an IT person doing IT in a company. Uh, this is now me providing IT support for other companies. So an MSP, I now provided support for hundreds of businesses all over the place. And this was like insane, insanely good. I got to learn a lot. Technology is an exciting space. And here's the problem. There's a lot of competition. There's a lot of competition. There's a lot of people doing tech right now. It is the industry that is changing faster than any other industry. It's an exciting industry. And as a result of that, there's a lot of people, a lot of smart people who wanna work in this space. So you've gotta stand outside of the crowd. What makes you better than others? The home lab thing was like a game changer for me because now I could tinker with stuff at home and that sort of led me to now working at this MSP, this managed services provider. And boy, did this place work me to the bone. Sounds crazy, but I was working long hours, responsible for a lot of clients, and I did three years of work in probably one year of work, if that makes sense. It was so busy, but as a result of that, it taught me a lot. I was thrown into the deep end so many times. And here's the thing, I remember I was working at a client. They were a fairly large company, like a financial services company, and they had this amazing EMC SAN. This is before it was Dell EMC. They had a SAN device, a storage area network, a big one. The last guy that was doing the storage administration left. And Emilio, you're now the guy. 
I had no idea. I never played around with storage devices in my life. And I had to just figure it out. I had to learn it by myself. The Google machine helped me out a lot. YouTube, hey, this is YouTube, helped me out a lot. Very, very hard, but also very, very thankful that I got to get exposed to a lot of stuff. Now, this is the thing that I'm gonna say. If you wanna learn about technology and learn about technology very, very quickly, go work for an MSP or like an IT consultancy sort of company providing IT support services assistance for companies out there. Because then you're gonna to get to play around, you're gonna to get to go to different sorts of companies all over the place and each company has a different IT setup. They're all working with different tech, different hardware, different software, different security protocols and you know, policies, different cloud platforms. You get to play around with all of it. So you get a good broad experience across all of the tech. It was uh, really, really good. Within this company, you know what? I saw opportunities. I loved the tech, but I also enjoyed having a bit of responsibility. I saw things that were wrong and I'm like, I can fix that. Not just from a tech perspective, but I wanna put in a new policy that fixes that thing and actually implement something new. I saw techs right? Tech people that I was working with that were just doing things wrong and I wish that I could help them and I did. I started mentoring them, started providing a little bit of leadership from them and then they started following me and asking me for advice and we'd have catch-ups and all this sort of stuff and then from there that's where I became a manager. So I got promoted and I became what's called a service delivery manager. And that was sort of my first proper managerial role. And that was now a lot more responsibility. And I had to take my hands off a little bit from the tech side of things and delve a lot more now into service delivery management, where essentially I'm now becoming an IT manager for multiple companies. I had seven companies, seven companies that I was actually providing full IT management of. Right? One of those seven companies, I was also acting as their new infrastructure manager. So I was doing an infrastructure manager role for one company and I was doing the service delivery manager roles for the other six. And it was uh, overwhelming, it was a lot of work. And this is great because now I not only knew the tech and because I came from a sys admin background, I knew the tech and I knew understand and how to talk tech to people, right? It was really, really helpful. But I also now started dealing with senior people in organizations, having meetings with executives, having meetings with C-level, like your chiefs, chief CEOs, your CIOs, all of these chiefs across the business and different directors and different managers of all different shapes and sizes in different types of industries. Because now I've got to understand around how to create contracts, how to read agreements, how to negotiate with vendors, with suppliers. And now I started getting a lot more into the management space. Started dealing with roadmaps and writing strategies and writing disaster recovery, recovery plans, IT acceptable use policies and all these other policies and procedures for a whole range of companies. So this MSP was instrumental for me to jump from the tech into the management front. And then there's a few other roles after that, but now in the management space. IT management, heads of technology, IT directors, all of that jazz. So even though now I'm now running technology functions and doing all that sort of jazz, and it's really exciting, I don't forget where I started and I don't forget the passion of why I wanted to get into technology in the first place. I wanted to get into tech because I enjoyed technology. So I've made an effort, a conscious effort, to stay up to date as much as I can. Because if I don't, I'm gonna fall behind. This is something that I'd recommend. If you're wanting to go on a similar journey to me, or maybe you're on this journey already, or you've already made it to a, you know, a senior IT role, fantastic. But always remember why you got into tech in the first place. Now look, at the same time doing all of this, I started doing this thing, right? What am I talking about? The YouTube machine, you know, Udemy, Skillshare, doing a lot of sponsorships, dealing with lots of third party companies, writing videos for them, courses, YouTube videos, right? This is a little side hustle, side gig that I did. And this in a way forces me to try to stay up to date. And also it opens up a huge community like you to interact with me. And this is what I love about YouTube. I don't know what the future will hold. Technology is exciting. AI is like the thing right now. And I'm excited about how this thing is gonna change the world. Pretty, pretty cool. Hopefully you enjoyed my journey. Hopefully you learned something new. Hey, why don't you let me know down below in the comments what you thought. But anyway, we release videos on all things tech. I would love it if you did the subscription thing. Click on the bell on the button so you don't miss out on anything as well. And until next time, keep doing the tech thing and we'll see you then.